Local youth learned what it's like to be a first responder. A big event is coming to the Tacoma Dome. And volunteers play an important part around the holidays. All that and more coming up next on Tacoma Report. Welcome to this new edition of Tacoma Report. I'm Angie Foster. And I'm Laura Proctor. The Tacoma Dome is recognized as one of the top venues in the country. And because of that, it's able to draw some big events. And that's happening once again. The Tacoma Dome has been selected to host the 2020 U.S. Junior Olympic National Gymnastic Championships in May of next year. This stepping stone to the national team and possibly the Olympics is not only a big deal in the sports world, but also a huge boost for the Tacoma area. The Tacoma Dome over its 36, 37 years of existence has hosted such incredible athletes, whether it's high school state champions or incredible Olympians like we'll see at this event, potential Olympians. What's even more unique about this one is it really started at our convention center. We've been hosting gymnastic events there for quite some time. And based on the success there, we were able to work with USA Gymnastics to bring this spectacular event to the Tacoma Dome. We've really been building a resume here in Tacoma and Pierce County over the last several years. Uh, you know, U.S. Open 2015 was a huge host opportunity. Ever since then, we've had a national or a large Western U.S. regional event uh, for youth or amateur sports here in Tacoma or Pierce County. Every time that happens, that boosts our value and our opportunity to, to get to that next level with something else. So uh, we, we were in the game. We were there to bid and, and fight for it, and, and we got it. To find out more information about the gymnastics championships and also ticket information, visit the Tacoma Dome website. Just because it's fall, that doesn't mean we have to give up on things we like to do during the summer, like swimming. The pool at People's Community Center in the Hilltop area, which is run through Metro Parks Tacoma, is open year round. You can do everything here from recreational swimming, which is offered several times each day, to taking swimming lessons. And if you're into conditioning, you can't beat the water exercise program that's available at People's Pool. There's also time set aside for just lap swimming. And mark the first Saturday of each month for the free community recreation swim. A complete listing of the swimming schedule and all of the other activities offered at the People's Community Center can be found on the Metro Parks Tacoma website. In addition to supplying safe and affordable utilities to residents, Tacoma Public Utilities is also a great place to work and build a career. Local high school students were recently able to get a first-hand look at what jobs are available in the utilities, construction, manufacturing, and transportation industry at the annual Pierce County Career Day at the Washington State Fairgrounds. In addition to TPU, the City of Tacoma had several booths set up showcasing employment opportunities available with the city. Students were able to talk with workers in these fields and see if the skills needed to perform these jobs are something they have an interest in. It allows the kids to come out and get hands-on training and they can learn a little bit more about what trade they might be interested in. I don't think, I don't think they're, they're exposed to it enough. If, if, if they continue to have classes and events like this, the word to get out. I look at it as something that's not necessarily, you know, to try to coerce them into something that they're not already wanting to do. Maybe they have some ideas already. You know, a lot of kids around here want to go to college and they, that's a good, good way to go. But like myself, I'm not a college person. I wasn't a school person. So I just went right into trades or something that was work related. And I think it's a really good opportunity to show different uh, op opportunities. I really like it here. It's really fun to talk to everyone. I built a couple things. I built a heart and a toolbox. So I thought it was going to be way different. I thought there was going to be less people. I didn't think it was going to be so big. I didn't know that there was going to be huge like machines outside. It's really cool. You have a complete uh, layout of what you need to do to get into our apprenticeship. Uh, everything from hourly to courses that are necessary to get in. If you're interested in finding out about current job openings with Tacoma Public Utilities, please visit the TPU website. 
Several Tacoma school students recently graduated from the Eastside Boys and Girls Club Youth Academy. The academy gives junior high and high school students an opportunity to learn what first responders do in our community by meeting with members of the Tacoma Police Department and Tacoma Fire Department over an eight-week course. It gives us an opportunity as a uh, law enforcement agency uh, to get to know uh, the kids in our community and then to get to know us. Uh, we have an opportunity to show them uh, what we do. And so it just gives us a great opportunity to, uh, to interact uh, with the young folks in our community, uh, build those relationships that are critically important as uh, we move forward in our lives. And uh, it, for the officers, it's a wonderful time as well. Chief Ramsdale and Assistant Tacoma Fire Chief Boyer were on hand for the graduation ceremony. They took questions from graduates, presented diplomas, and enjoyed a fun evening together with the graduating class. For more information, visit the Tacoma Police Department's website. For many years, the Tacoma Police Department has been giving back to the community during the holidays. When we come back from the break, we'll learn about the Shop with a Cop program. Stay with us. For more than 20 years, the Tacoma Police Department has been helping children in need having a brighter holiday season through the Shop with the Cop program. Officers and other members of the department take eligible children on a shopping spree for their family members. Here to tell us more about this great Tacoma Police tradition is Detective Elizabeth Schieferdecker. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. So can, for those viewers that are not aware, can you share with us a little history about Shop with the Cop? Certainly. So Shop with the Cop started in 1991 by a small group of officers that saw a need in the community where we needed to connect, especially with the kids. So they started the program and this will be our 29th year. Wow. Yeah. So how many children have been nominated over these past 29 years? I think we're getting close to the $2,000 or 2000 number um, with the kids. We, the last couple of years, we've taken about 110 kids a year. Awesome. How are the kids nominated? We primarily get our nominations through the Tacoma Public Schools. So we work directly with the school counselors and they nominate the deserving kids for the program and then we, we go with that. There are occasions where an officer will meet a child on the street and they'll nominate them as well. Oh, that's so awesome. It is. So I have had the opportunity to volunteer for this program for a very long time. Yes. And if you could share with us a, just a glimpse of what it would look like through the eyes of the child the day of Shop with the Cop. This is the best part. So the morning of Shop with a Cop, um, we pair our children one-on-one -on -one with an officer. So every kid has their own officer. So the officer goes out to their house and picks them up bright and early. They get to ride in the police car. Um, of course, there's lights and sirens involved and they make it so much fun for the kids. And then the officers take them to Target where we shop. Um, they have a designated amount and the kids get to pick whatever they want. So they get to shop until their heart's content. Um, and then we have snacks for the kids. We have a Santa Claus, so they get a picture with Santa Claus, and most of the kids include the officers in their picture with the Santa Claus. Um, and then we have gift wrappers, and so if the kids want, they can have all of their gifts wrapped, and then they go home with bags and bags of gifts and snacks and hopefully that. memories that will last a lifetime. Well, I love that you guys do this because it really gives the kids the opportunity to see the officer in a different light. They're helping them shop. They're sometimes, you know, looking down a list, checking it twice. Absolutely. Giving the kids ideas for gifts for mom or a special gift for dad. Yes. So cool. It so is. How can the community help? Well, obviously there's a, always a financial need. And so any donations are greatly appreciated. Um, we are completely 100% funded through donations. And so any donations that the public can make um, directly to Shop with a Cop goes a long way. 100% of our donations actually go to the children. Well, this is a very special day for children and their families, and I imagine that it's a significant impact for officers as well. Oh, very much so. They get just as much out of it. They sure do. So, Elizabeth, thank you and the Tacoma Police Department for all of the behind-the-scenes things that are going on, that are volunteer time, some officers even donating their own monies to help make yeah. this a Christmas to remember for many, many families and, our t and children in this community. Yes. So thank you for well, being here. Thank you, and thank you for all of your volunteer hours as well. Oh, I just love it. Thank you very much. So if you'd like to donate or find out more information about the Shop with the Cop program, please go to the Tacoma Police Department website. In addition to the Shop with the Cop program, there are a lot more acts of generosity that are being planned out in the community. We'll tell you about some of these when we come back from the break.
volunteers and big gatherings seem to go hand in hand during the holidays. And that was evident during the 38th annual Lobster Shop Holiday Meal, where the Tacoma restaurant provided a great feast with all the fixings for low-income seniors. This tradition is a big undertaking to pull off each year, and volunteers play a major role. Many of those helping out on this day were City of Tacoma employees, as well as the Tacoma City Council. The volunteers are, are very helpful. We get a lot of people from the City of Tacoma and the community centers and whatnot that help serve everybody. And, you know, it's, it's nice to uh, network with those groups and, and work with them in collaboration to, to make the event successful. And we do this dinner annually for them around the holidays, uh, just kind of a way of us to say thank you and to let them know that, you know, they're still appreciated in the community and it's just our way of, you know, reaching out to them and, and keeping interactions alive with, with the senior community in the area. Each year, the Lobster Shop and its staff prepare two full meal seatings. It's a special event for those who participate and something that these seniors look forward to, not only for the amazing meal, but all the socializing they get to do with other community members. Another area where you'll find people in the community giving back is at local food banks. Today, Lane Ficke takes a look at one nonprofit organization which greatly benefits from residents wanting to get involved. More than 14 million pounds of food is dispensed each year by the Emergency Food Network. It's these items that make their way to local food banks, providing the vital element that everyone needs. It's quite a scene at the distribution center with food arriving on a continual basis, while at the same time, other items are being prepared to go out. And what helps the Emergency Food Network run like a well-oiled machine? It's the volunteers, and the only thing it takes is a willingness to help. We have more than 3,000 volunteers every year and they do all kinds of things for our organization. They help us here at our repack project, packing pears, scooping rice, scooping oats, things like that, packaging it into family-sized portions. We also have volunteers out at EFN's Mother Earth Farm. So volunteers help with weeding and seeding and also harvesting the food from the farm. We also have volunteers help with countless fundraising events we have throughout the year. Many of EFN's volunteers are repeat helpers, coming the first time as a way to help the community, but then finding out that it's also a great way to connect with other people. This is my third time volunteering here at EFN and um, our city employees come together and it's a wellness activity, it's a team building activity, but also it's giving back to the community. EFN does so much for our citizens and for our community that for me, um, anything I can do to help out and uh, with the skills that I have uh, to be able to give back to the community is really important to me too. I just find it to be a really rewarding experience. It's fun to work with different folks from within my own uh, employees in my own city uh, and then as well as this is such an amazing organization. Um, the fact that they are able to do so much for our community. It's a small price to pay to take a morning and come here, uh, work together, do some team building, but really give back to our community and to the folks that need this so desperately. The volunteers are really the lifeline for this essential organization. This food does not get to the food banks in the Tacoma Pierce County area without them. And that means thousands of families would have to go hungry even more than they already are. I cannot imagine us being able to do the work that we do without every single volunteer. Everybody that comes in here has the aim to feed their neighbor in need and they make an impact on hunger just by coming in once and repacking a bag of rice, although they do much more than that each time someone comes in. For Tacoma Report, I'm Lane Ficke. To learn more about the Emergency Food Network or to get information about how you can volunteer there, go to their website. A lot of us have guests arriving around the holidays, and for some, it can be a little cramped when family members are here for a while. Some Tacoma residents have turned to accessory dwelling units, or ADUs as they are sometimes called. The city enhanced its accessory dwelling unit and attached accessory dwelling unit regulations earlier this year. Since updating, the city has seen an increase in permit applications for these, which is part of the plan to address innovative approaches to residential infill development. If you are interested in the program or have questions, contact the Planning and Development Services Department. 
The city of Tacoma wants businesses to succeed in the community. That's why it offers a myriad of detailed business resources that walk you through how to start or grow your business. You can also connect with an experienced coach, be mentored through one of its local community partners, or attend a training workshop to get hands-on guidance. Check out their website to learn more. Training is an essential aspect for various jobs within the city of Tacoma. When we come back from the break, we'll find out how workers are preparing for possible snow this winter and the Tacoma Police Department heads to the hills to sharpen their skills. We'll be right back. Winter is just around the corner. And that means that city crews are running their annual snow and ice training. Stacy Elifred has more on how the Street Operations Division prepares now for the winter weather season ahead. When snowflakes are forecasted to fly and begin to accumulate, city crews start preparing. Basically, we get the forecast from uh, our local forecasters, and then we weigh that information, and then we decide on what we're going to staff for a snow and ice storm. Streets are plowed and de-iced on a priority level, with crews working to clear one lane of traffic in each direction. Nothing's changed this year. We still uh, plow by primary, secondary, and then auxiliary routes and we do ask that the public follows those routes when they're trying to get where they need to go during a winter weather uh, emergency. During a storm, residents are encouraged to take public transportation if possible. Pierce Transit and the city have worked together to make sure transit routes are ready. We ask that the public takes public transportation or prepares themselves the night before that they know that the winter weather is coming. Make sure that their car is appropriately ready for winter weather. Be prepared this winter. Review the snow routes map and have a plan for whatever the weather may hold. For Tacoma Report, I'm Stacey Ellifrit. Visit the city's inclement weather page to view the snow routes map and to find tips on preparing for winter weather. The Tacoma Police Department recently spent a day with the Pierce County Sheriff's Office in ropes training, one of the skills needed as part of the search and rescue team. This training is essential when responding to incidents like a vehicle over an embankment, coordinating with emergency medical services to provide patient care, and more. The Tacoma Police Department collaborates with Pierce County, which is a benefit to the citizens of Tacoma. The citizens of Tacoma are very fortunate because we've developed a great training relationship with the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, which allows us to utilize their manpower in conducting urban search and rescue within the city of Tacoma, as well as it allows them to use our manpower to assist them with search and rescue up in their uh, different districts. In addition to high angle rope rescue, the department also trains for swift water, snowmobile and ATV rescues, as well as missing person searches in wilderness and urban areas. For more information, visit the department's website. Turn the, turn the handle. And finally, the Tacoma City Council recently approved changes to the city's residential curbside recycling program. These changes include maintaining residential curbside co-mingled recycling service with minor adjustments to the accepted curbside recycling list, as well as a new recycling surcharge of $2.82 per month for all residential recycling customers. The surcharge will take effect on January 1, 2020. Solid Waste Management also plans to replace curbside glass collection with five glass drop-off stations throughout the city. Curbside glass collection will continue until these locations are finalized early next year. For more information on these changes, visit the Tacoma Recycles page. That's all the time we have on this edition of Tacoma Report. A great way to find out about the services the City of Tacoma has to offer is by going to cityoftacoma.org. Until next time, I'm Angie Foster. And I'm Laura Proctor. Thanks for watching.